Are you looking for either a science to do as a family to a new homeschool science period or three you have already decided you want to do the good and the beautiful science but you're not sure which unit to pick well in today's video we're going to look through three of the good and the beautiful science units i'm going to explain to you why i like the good and the beautiful sciences briefly in case you're already familiar with them and then we're going to flip through Hey guys, it's Vani from Mrs. Mom's Homeschool and welcome to my channel. And if you're new here, I make videos to help make this homeschooling journey a lot easier for you by sharing with you day in the life video, videos, tips, advice, and curriculum reviews to make it easier for you guys to find what it is you might want to use. So today we're talking about the good and the beautiful science units. We have been using the good and the beautiful science for several years now and they are just have been in the process of remaking all of their old units and making some new ones as well. So if, been used, if you have used them in the past, the things that are different are that now your lessons don't just come in a bunch of papers. You, the teacher's guide is actually spiral bound and your kids also have their own student journal. You have one for grades three through six and one for extension seventh and eighth. The scientists open and go, so there's very little lesson preparation. All you need are a few of the items that you probably already have in your house for each experiment. Very hands-on. The images are beautiful and colorful. There's even videos to go along with the lessons. All of the Good and the Beautiful's content also has high moral value, and all of the content is wholesome. For the science units, these are family-style subjects. You can do it with all of your kids all at once, which is what I really, really enjoy. So today I'm going to show you a look into reptiles, amphibians and fish, marine biology, which was one of my favorites in the past. This one is actually free for download on their website, which I will post in the description below and arthropods, another fun one. We have not done the reptiles and amphibians and fish one yet. The other two we have in the past, but I have a new little one who is going to be starting fresh. She's seven years old and she's gotten just a taste of some of these, but these are ones that we've done in the past. But anyway, let's just jump right into the curriculum. Reptiles, amphibians, and fish. This is a third grade through eighth grade unit study. If you have children younger than third grade, the good and the beautiful just release sciences for second grade and under. You want to check that out at thegoodandthebeautiful.com. So let's look at reptiles, amphibians, and fish. This is the teacher's guide. And here we also have the student journal. I only have the grades three to six. However, the seventh and eighth has the same content, except they have an, an extra sheet for the older child to read through and has a little activity for them to do. That's the difference between the third through six versus the seventh and eighth. So in this particular study, you can also choose to purchase the read aloud book packs, which I don't think I got for this particular subject. However, your child will be learning about reptiles, amphibians and fish, turtles, snakes, lizards, crocodilians, tuateras, frogs and toads, newts and salamanders, Sicilians, fish, saltwater fish and fresh freshwater fish. So if you look inside, the, if you did decide to get the book pack, you would be getting this one called Buzztail, the story of a rattlesnake. You would be also getting this one, Curious Reptiles and Amphibians. And if you go down to the Good and the Beautiful's website slash science, you will find their suggestions. So here it explains about the student journals your science wall, your lesson preparation, your activities and experiments, your unit videos and where to find them, content for older children, content for younger children. And it talks about the different versions. It says new discoveries are being made on an ongoing basis. This course is reviewed and revised periodically to keep information as up to date as possible. This version is the second edition of this unit. This page talks about the lesson extensions and it gives you an example of what they would do if they were in seventh and eighth grade, as well as the book that would be 
coming in the book pack for them if you decided to buy that. Over here you have your supplies needed. It goes by lesson. And there's simple things you have in the house like tape, flashlight, scissors, markers, glue, things like that. Now here is your vocabulary. And this is what you would put up on your science wall. Now a long time ago, not too long ago, about a, two years ago, I had a really big beautiful bulletin board that I got off of Amazon. That was our science wall. But now I have a chalkboard and it's magnetic and I'm gonna show you my science wall for our human body unit. So you can see how you would cut these out and put them up. So in my classroom here, I have a big chalkboard and all I did on one side was I put the definitions up here as we learn them. And then they're easy to just take down, take the magnets off. If I wanted to write notes, I'm writing other things here, but if I wanted to write more notes, I could do that on that side as well. Okay, so for every lesson, this is lesson one, you have different things. So it gives you your objective, which here is to help the children learn about the different body features of reptiles, amphibians, and fish that enabled them to live in various habitats. And it tells you what to do before to prepare also the supplies that you're gonna need for that lesson. Here you have your introduction. It tells you what to read to the children, some questions to ask them. You always have all these adorable pictures. And then it goes to your science wall and it tells you which words that the kids are gonna read. And those three are gonna go up on your science wall day one. Then you have an activity here, the hiker hunt activity. It says, let's imagine we're a world traveling hiker searching for interesting vertebrates, animals with backbones, living in the rainforest of Costa Rica. But beware, you might encounter some dangerous animals, so be careful where you step and what you touch. So then on the next page, they have to read each animal description, pausing after each one, and the children have to search for the matching picture. So here's the pictures here. And as part of the preparation, you were supposed to place those cards throughout the room. So you would cut these out, put them around the room, around the house. You can see how pretty the pictures are. And then you would read just the description. It says like American crocodile, placed near a water source, or Sicilian, placed under a paper or book. So it tells you where to place them. So you're gonna read the description and your child should bring back the card of the animal that was described and you can turn off the lights and use a flashlight. So it's like a little game activity. They make all the lessons fun and hands-on to keep the kids interested. And then here's a take your temperature activity. It talks about how reptiles are cold-blooded and then it gives you the lesson one extension if you have older kids as well. So we are going to just do a quick flip through of this now. Now looking into the student journal, after each lesson, your child is going to be prompted to go over to their student journal and fill out a page. So for the first page, they're going to do the lab of taking the temperature. They're going to do the air temperature versus the child's body temperature at the beginning when they're outside and after moving. And then there's some questions here about the temperature. What do you notice about your body temperature as your activity changes? What makes your temperature remain relatively warm and constant? And so every day, there's a different activity for them to do that correlates to the lesson that they had just learned. And I like that these are hole punched because at the end of the homeschool year, during the portfolio making, I just put the entire book inside a binder. You want to see how I make portfolios at the end of the year? Check out the videos on the card above. Now we're going to move on to arthropods. The books that come with this are The Boy Who Loved Bugs, The Story of Maria Marion, 
and Fiddler Crab. For the seventh and eighth graders, there's the Insects and Arachnids Questions and Answers book. Okay, they're gonna learn about arthropods, introduction to insects. They're gonna have an insect stations section, bees and wasps, butterflies, ants, insect defenses, arachnids, crustaceans, and entomology. Use your vocabulary words. Okay, lesson one, what to read to the children, the vocabulary word to put up. In lesson one, you're gonna help the children understand and distinguish the distinguishing characteristics of arthropods. These are more words to put up on the science wall. It talks about the exoskeleton and vertebrates, invertebrates versus vertebrates, ectothermic, and then some vocabulary review. And now we're just gonna flip through. You're gonna be able to see the activities that they have. Here's the answers that are gonna go inside their notebook. Here. This was a really fun unit to do, actually. And I hate insects. But I enjoyed teaching this. It was nice learning all the new things. And which is especially good if you have kids who are afraid of bugs because it helps them to understand them better, see the beauty in it, see how cool they actually are, and take away their fear a little bit. Now, actually, when I did this part, the crustaceans one, I got a crayfish off of Amazon and I had my daughter dissect the crayfish. Here is the student journal for the arthropods unit. Vocabulary review, Venn diagrams. This is for the insect station. Crossword puzzles, puzzle pieces, ob observing arthropods, notes. Next, we move on to the marine biology. Remember that this one is free for download online. If you're going to get the books to this, you have Dive, Explore Coral Reefs Around the World, and you have The Dangers of Sea Creatures. For the older children, you have the book called Explore the Ocean Floor. And here's a sample of the work they could be doing. Your kids are going to be learning about ocean characteristics, ocean zones, tides and intertidal zones, marine life, coral reefs, marine invertebrates, marine reptiles, fish, sharks, and marine mammals. Now let's just take you into this book. Vocabulary. For lesson one, you have to fill a pitcher with tap water, add some drops of food coloring, pour the mixture into an ice cube tray and freeze it for a few hours. And you also need a globe or a map. Then you have an ocean painting study. You have some vocabulary words. You have a, a little activity to show you how much of the earth is made of ocean. You have an ocean current experiment. You have how salt affects buoyancy experiment, where you make the egg float. This has a lot of experiments in this one. I actually have a video. I want you to watch that in the card above of our lesson that we did here a long time ago when my kids were little. We took the book to the beach and we had a lesson. Part of our lesson was out there. That's what I love about these units is that you can get really creative you can make little field trips and go to different places and you're not stuck to one subject the entire year. You can learn about whatever your kids are interested in learning about and you, there's so much to do that you can, if, especially if you live in Florida, you can go to Alligator Farm or you can go to the aquarium to see sea turtles or go to the zoo or whatever. Go to the pet store and find some fish to look at. Just so many things, go to the beach, go swim with dolphins, swim with manatees. I did that once, it was amazing. And then, last but not least, the Marine Biology Student Journal.
So what did you guys think? If you had to choose between the three, which one do you think you would start with? I'm gonna come up with a couple of more videos like this to show you three at a time because I have a whole bunch <laughs> that I'm using with my third grader this year. And my son has gone through mostly all of them already as, as did my 15 year old. So I just wanna thank you guys so much for watching. I feel like I'm really close to the camera. Uh, make sure you subscribe so you can know when all those other videos are coming out. Hit the notification bell and I will see you in the next video.